Hello, my name is Laura Young and I am an environmental campaigner and PhD researcher based up in Scotland in the city of Dundee and it's my absolute joy to join with you virtually to talk about this really important issue which is climate justice. This is something that I've been really passionate about for the past few years and it's something I've dedicated both my academic life to but also it surrounds the campaigning work that I do and also some of the previous career choices that I have made. Um, I'm 26 and as I say I live up in Scotland and before I started doing my PhD which is researching into nature-based solutions and community engagement when it comes to climate resilience I spent some time working for the amazing um, charity Tear Fund and I did a variety of different jobs with them, um, one of which was actually coordinating some of our efforts at COP26, which was the United Nations Climate Summit that came to Glasgow, my home city, um, in 2021. Um, I worked there and learned so much about climate change and climate justice, especially from a global perspective. But before I worked there, I was studying. I am a geography and environmental science nerd and I have an undergraduate and a master's in the world of environmental studies. And it's something that I love to learn about, but also love to talk about. A lot of my work over the past few years has surrounded campaigning for various different issues when it comes to climate change, waste, plastic, sustainability, whether that is the food we eat, the way we travel, the fashion that we wear, or of course, thinking about some of the big ways that we can really campaign and influence and make some change when it comes to climate change. And I thought it'd be interesting just to tell you a bit about my story and my journey to this, because it's actually not something that was rooted in my faith at all at the beginning. Shock. <laughs> um, and that's because I grew up and I fell in love with the subject geography while I was at school and did the Duke of Edinburgh, absolutely loved being outside in the best country of the world, in Scotland. We've got beautiful mountains and rivers and beaches, and so I absolutely fell in love with the natural world creation, the place that we get to call home. And so I was learning about the environment, environmental issues in school. I was talking to my friends about climate change, about the changing world, the amount of plastic that we have, all of these different issues as a young person. But the one place that I wasn't talking about any of these issues to or wasn't having conversations with anyone about this was in church. It's not because my church actively didn't believe in climate change or think it was important. It's just not something that was a regular topic for discussion. And it made me think, well, being a Christian has nothing to do with climate justice or climate action. And my passion for environmental issues isn't something that I should talk about in church. Boy, was I wrong. And that is something that I've been on a journey with as I have been through my studies and been through my workplace and still navigate today is what is the role for us as Christians in the climate movement, but also what is the role for our churches in a world that is changing? Um, and I think when we look at scripture, which we will in just a second, we realise that there is so much in the Bible that talks about climate change, not necessarily in the way we recognise it, but certainly in the justice angle and talk about the way that we should be looking after our planet. So actually I want to start right at the beginning <laughs> because when I was first trying to think about well what what does my faith have to do with the changing climate about people being impacted by climate change and environmental issues does the bible say anything about creation care? Well you only have to get to the first few pages to see the call that we have for creation care environmental justice and looking after this planet. From the Genesis creation story, we hear that God has beautifully created this world and he's made it and not just said this is good, he said it is. I'm hoping you said very good. And this is something that is beautiful and sustains us in our everyday life. Um, and it's this place that we call home. And when we look around, I wonder, do you look outside your window and look around when you're spending time outdoors and think, do you know, yeah, this isn't just good, this is very good. And I always think, you know, maybe on a spring's morning, we're getting to spring, we're getting to summer, we're seeing the, the changing um, seasons. 
do you look around on a spring's morning or a crisp autumn? That's my favourite season. And think, do you know, yeah, the birds and the trees and, and the fresh, crisp air, you know, actually, yeah, this, this is a very good planet. Or maybe you've dipped your toes into the ocean or you've climbed a favourite hill and you've looked around and thought, wow, breathtaking, this planet, this place we get to call home, this is very good. And in Sam, um, chapter 19, verses 1 to 4, I think this really encapsulates the beginning, the beauty of creation. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Wow, that really does speak about these beautiful moments that we have when we look around the earth and just think, this place is very good. But I wonder, when we see documentaries like Blue Planet, or when you see news coverage of wildfires in Australia, floods in Pakistan, droughts on the east of Africa, do we then think that this world is very good and that we're taking care of it? Or what about examples close to home when we see some of the worst <laughs> concoctions flowing out into our oceans off of British shores where I am in the UK when we see areas being littered and full of plastic do we think that this is good or very good or when we think about how many times we've heard that it's been the hottest year on record and actually we need to then look back to this Genesis story and realise that God didn't just create a beautiful world he created it and then asked us to look after it, to take responsibility for it. The first thing we were given responsibility over was this world. And we were asked to, to take care of this place that we call home. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the King James puts it, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and keep it. But when I see our world, the way that we put strain on our resources, put carbon into the atmosphere and put our global neighbours at risk, can we really say that we have listened to that commandment? But I think there's also an important thing, and this is a journey many people have been on. When I learned about climate change at school, kind of 10 years ago, we thought of a skinny polar bear sitting on a small ice cube floating around one of the poles. Or we would think of an orangutan losing its home at a forest fire somewhere in a far off tropical jungle. But actually we need to think about climate change as a justice issue and a people issue, an issue that affects our global neighbours around the world. And there's a great quote that I always like to use, which is from Catherine Hayhoe. Is a, she's a climate scientist, world renowned, She's from Canada, living in the States, and she's a Christian, and she puts it best. She says, climate change is not only an environmental issue, climate change is a poverty issue, it's a hunger issue, it's an issue of inequality and injustice, it's a human issue, and that's why we care. Because we know that when sin entered the world, our relationship with God, each other, ourselves, and creation were all broken. But it's part of our calling to mend those relationships, be a part of God's ministry of reconciliation here on this earth. And in Romans chapter 12, I'm always struck by how broad um, worship is described. Often when we grow up, we think of worship as worship songs, worship music, especially on a Sunday morning. We might think of prayer. We might think of dancing. We might think of other things. But Often we forget that actually worship is a really broad term for what God has called us to do here on earth. We bring it to a smaller and smaller meaning, but actually God doesn't restrict us to worshipping in a certain number of ways. And he doesn't see worship as any particular form. Instead, he asks us to worship him through all things. And as the passage says in verses one and verses two, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And often when I think of that, I used to think of Sunday school lessons and when I was told to offer up my, you know, living sacrifice, everything that I do, I would think, oh, that means I need to not speak badly of people in the playgrounds when I was younger, when I was a kid. Um, you know, I need to be really kind. Um, I need to not swear. You know, I need to pray every day. I need to try and, you know, be a kind of good Christian person. But I would forget that actually part of my life, part of my lifestyle is all of that. But also it's in the way I live my life. It is the clothes that I put on my back. It is the food that I eat to, to sustain me. It is the way I travel into work. It is the way I spend my free time and spend my money. And I think that's something really important. But how do we think about that through the lens of climate justice? Because when thinking about the way that the world is just now, where we have storms and floods and droughts, heat waves and wildfires, when it comes to climate change, the people who are least responsible are hit first and worst when it comes to climate change impacts. And we all have a responsibility to look at ourselves, to think what can we do for climate change, for climate justice? What influence can we have beyond ourselves to bring businesses, churches, elected officials, communities on board with what we're doing to create a world that represents that Genesis beautiful creation, but does it in a way that's worship to God because he has asked us, he's given us responsibility over his creation. And to think about, as Catherine Say Hayhoe said, what is climate change today? It's not just an environmental issue that affects the physical world. It's a human issue. It's a poverty issue. It's a justice issue. It's a human issue and that's why we care. So what does that actually look like? I mean, one of the interesting projects I want to tell you about is this year I have been privileged to get involved with tier fund projects again. It's great to be able to stay connected to them even after I've moved on to my studies again. But one of the projects I've been getting involved with is a film project where I've been having climate conversations with other individuals who also are part of organisations, Christian organisations that do many different types of work. We've had conversations with Christians Against Poverty, with International Justice Mission, with the Evangelical Alliance, with Alpha, with so many different organisations. And we've been able to talk about, does climate change intersect with any of the issues that they talk about? And I was apprehensive going in. We didn't set the agenda for these conversations. We had some guiding questions, but actually we wanted to openly talk about how does climate change and climate justice interact with all of these different organisations who are doing amazing work. I was very ready for all of the conversations to say, actually, it's got nothing to do with what we do here at our organisation or it has nothing to do with me personally. But I was surprised in the best way to realise that actually climate justice threads throughout not just the theology of many of these organisations, but actually the work that they do. One of the conversations, for example, was the Evangelical Alliance. And we were talking about how Climate justice is a gospel issue and the gospel is something that broadens out to realising that we need to find climate justice on this earth when we are spreading the good news. And we talked about how it fits into the Bible and how it fits into teaching and what it means for churches to be on a mission to take care of our creation, creation care, that Genesis call. It was also great to talk to the likes of Alpha and hear about how one of the burning questions that young people have is about creation care, is about climate change, it's about what we are doing and actually how Alpha have been able to address that question and work to empower and inspire young people in climate action alongside all the work that they do answering some of life's biggest questions. Also speaking to International Justice Mission to see that actually climate change and trafficking are two things that unfortunately go hand in hand because when people are vulnerable that is when trafficking becomes one of the greatest risks and what makes people vulnerable climate change whether that is floods urgently removing you know 
any reason for you to stay in one place because your house is flooded, your home is maybe gone and you have to be on the move. Or maybe it's longer term, maybe it's constant droughts, mean you have to shift from the farming land that you used to live on and you have to move elsewhere. When we have environmental disasters, when we have wildfires and floods and droughts, people begin to move and those people are vulnerable. And who are some of the first people to step in? Unfortunately, it's traffickers. So we know that these issues go hand in hand, but also here at home, speaking to Christians, Christians Against Poverty, and realising that actually when we talk about justice and poverty issues here in the UK, climate change, climate justice, are some threads that are kind of woven throughout that conversation. You know, we don't just want people to have insulation and double glazing in their homes to save energy. We also want it because it will save people money and it will also mean that people have a warm house, a warm place to sleep, to have their meals, to raise their family, to work from. So it's not just a climate change issue about saving energy, actually, it's about dignity and it's about, you know, making sure that our population are safe in the face of a changing climate. And so these conversations have been eye-opening to see that climate change and climate justice threads throughout so many different parts of our world and our everyday lives. And so what are some of the decisions that we can make every day to live out that Romans 12 um, worship to honour God's whole creation, people and planet? I always love the quote about before you finish breakfast you've depended on half of the world and that was from Martin Luther King and you know it really speaks to all of the different products and food things that we use and the energy that comes into our home has been touched by the lives of so many people across the world and with every one of those choices we can make good choices to be more sustainable to buy products that honour people and the supply chain and the place that they are from and that's something that we can do through the food we eat, where it comes from, how much we waste, you know, being really critical about not wasting these resources that this planet has created for us. The clothes we wear, where we've bought them from, how we treat them, how the workers were treated, how the planet was treated when creating the things that we have in our wardrobes, how we travel to work, where we bank with our money, where our pensions sit looking at divesting. I always love the term boring activism and that certainly is when you think about banking and pensions, but actually all of these things are things we can do to not just be more sustainable, which is a good thing, but actually to do it because we are called to creation care. We're called to love our neighbours who are impacted by climate change and we're called to do it in a way that is worship, a Romans 12 worship to God. And we do this because when we read Matthew's gospel, any of the Gospels, but when we read Matthew's Gospel, because I know that that is a focus for this time, and I know that we are thinking about how it flips, how it flips the Gospel, how it flips our perceptions of all of this stuff. And I know that when God and Jesus talk about loving our neighbour, loving our God and loving our neighbour, again, often we think about oh, I just need to love everyone. It's just a feeling. I just need to make sure that when I see somebody walking down the street or when I see somebody through social media or on the television, that I just love them and it's a feeling. But actually, when you look at the Bible and look at Matthew's gospel and look at Jesus' teaching through the lens of climate change and climate justice and climate activism, you realise that loving our neighbour it's not a passive thing and it's not a feeling, it's an action. We need to get up, we need to have a Romans 12 attitude of worship that is active, that is moving and that is doing things to love our neighbour. When we see stories of climate injustice, when we see communities who have the smallest carbon footprints, who have nothing to do with climate change, suffering at the hands of often our lifestyles and our economies and our societies, we need to be getting up and saying that I love my neighbour and I'm going to do what I can with my time, with my resources and with my influence to do something about that. And I think that begins to change the conversation. Often when we talk about 
climate change or climate action, it feels like giving up. It feels like we've got to give up lots of stuff. It means we've got to give up buying lots of new clothes. We've got to give up using our petrol car for every single journey that we want to make. We've got to give up some of our favourite foods. We've got to give up the dream of travelling and seeing the world. And actually, I think that's been a real problem, is that we've always framed this as giving up, as sacrificing things. But actually, instead, we need to be flipping it around and saying, this is an act of worship. This is something that I am doing because... I love God above all else and I love my neighbours and I am called to worship him through everything that I do. So it means that I wake up and I want to eat food that has been grown sustainably, that supports farmers locally and globally, that are paid a fair wage, that are living in good conditions. I then want to put on clothes that aren't mass produced I don't want to have a bulging wardrobe to choose from. I want to have just what I need. I want to take care of it. I want to mend it. I want to learn how to sew on a button. Why? Because these are precious resources and materials from our world. And I recognise that the fashion I consume has an impact on the planet and on people. And I want to choose not to sacrifice the way that I get around, but actually I want to say, God, I honour you, this beautiful world that you've given us, and the impact that my lifestyle and my community has all around the world. So I'm going to choose to leave 10 minutes earlier and I'm going to walk to work. I am going to take my bike, even if it's raining, which in Scotland is a lot of the time. I am going to car share. I'm going to take those extra steps to say, you know, this is what I'm doing because it is an act of worship. It's because I love my neighbours and it's because I love my God. And I think when we change our position when we flip things around, we realise that actually climate action is not full of sacrifices. It's not full of negative ideas. Actually, it's a place for us as Christians to show our love of God and our care for creation. And it's interesting because I said at the beginning, you know, this is not something that the church I grew up in really spoke about when I went there. I'm older now and have moved city, but I still have family that go to that church. But interestingly, when I was on this journey to thinking about sustainability and climate change, I was speaking to the minister and I was saying, you know, why does the church not talk about these issues? Surely there's a responsibility that we have. And he said, well, what can we do as a church? What can we go on a journey as to think about the different things we can do? And that set that church down a path to thinking about creation care. It started with taking the plastic cups that we used after the service and changing them out to say, we want everyone to bring your own cup, but we will have some China mugs, but we are going plastic cup free. And I think they saved about 30,000 cups a year, something bonkers. But they said, we're doing this because we don't want to waste resources. And we realised that plastic is a problem. And then it changed into saying, actually, we're going to take some of our car park, remove a few spaces, put in some bike racks because we want to make sure that if people are going to make the choice to use active transport, they need to have somewhere safe and secure to put their bikes. Then the green space around the car park that was just some bits of grass got transformed into an orchard, a community orchard, which has been thriving. There are now wildflower meadows throughout as well. Some small changes, but actually saying with every inch of land that you've given us, we are going to honour and we are going to try and make more biodiverse, more community centred and do it in a way that is for you, for God and to honour his planet. And also how to bring it into the life of the church. Events such as fashion swapping events where you can go and exchange clothes with people. um, Different types of fundraisers for charities that are to do with waste, plastic, climate change. Bringing climate justice also into the heart of sermons and sermon series and talking about these issues from the pulpit and ultimately bringing prayer into this issue as well. And the journey that that church has been on, the journey I've been on, the journey we're all going on, I think is ultimately about realising that we need to look at the Bible from a different lens sometimes. We've often read it, many of us maybe for our whole lives, 
through the same lens and we've never thought you know how does this issue in this case climate justice intersect with the way that I look at the bible but actually we are called to constantly be learning from the bible from god's word and from jesus life and i think the one thing that we can take away from this on the theme of flipping it is about flipping our idea of climate action from this hard to do sacrificial frustrating lifestyle to actually something that is our reconciliation role here on earth the ministry of reconciliation we're doing it because we love our neighbors we're doing it because we love god We've been called to creation care, to look after this planet. And that's why we do those things. And when we flip it and when we see that, that is when we begin to have our hearts and minds changed. And it becomes an everyday practice, a rhythm, something spiritual. And it also becomes easier because when you're doing something because you love God and you worship him, that's when some of the biggest change happens. But if I can just leave you with another final thing, which is there was lots in that hopefully things to make you think about some actions you can take, whether that is changing something about your lifestyle, maybe it's getting in touch with a local representative about an issue you care about, maybe it's taking something for your church and seeing what you can do. But one thing we can all do is pray about this issue. We can pray for those who are impacted by climate change today and those who have been for many years and prayer that they can be safe in these environments, can find security in new places if they've had to move around. And we can pray for those who are on the front line. We can also pray for decision makers, local to global, to really make the decisions that we need from the top down to make sustainability a core part of our society. And then we can pray for ourselves to say, what can I do from today moving forward that honours creation, that takes responsibility, this responsibility we've been given. And what can I do to love my neighbours actively, to do it in a way that is moving, that is active, and that is for climate justice? How can I get God to change my heart on this issue and reveal something that we can do? Um, So I'm going to pray just just to finish um, and thank you. Um, You can find um, more about the various different pieces of work I've done, um, on my website, which is lesswastelaura.com. Less Waste Laura, because that's where you can also find me on social media. You can tell I went on a bit of a journey trying to reduce my waste a few years ago. But you can find out about all the different pieces of work I've done there. I will also be sharing um, different resources and things that churches can use, um, people can use, and you can always get in touch if you ever need any ideas for any of the work that you're wanting to do. But I want to pray to close um, and I wish you all the best as you virtually and in person go through the, the rest of this festival and this conference. Dear Father, I just thank you that you give us the opportunity to look through your words, look through your scriptures and God, I would just pray that you would continue to reveal new things from Um, this precious, precious word. And God, I ask that um, as we move forward from today, you would constantly have in our minds, how can we be looking through your word, the Bible, with a lens of climate justice? God, I pray for those who are impacted by climate change. God, would you um, draw near to them? Would you show mercy to them? Um, Would you bring them safety and security in their current situations? And God, I pray for those who are in positions where they could make a real difference. Lord, we all have influence, but you have also placed more influence on others, particularly world leaders and elected representatives who have the opportunity to make big changes, to be sustainable from the top down. We pray that you would really move mountains where we need that. But God, I pray for all of us as individuals, as communities, as churches. God, I pray that you would flip the way that we read the gospel, that we would flip the way that we look at worship and activism, Jesus' life and how we love our neighbours. And I pray that you would reveal to us each individually the way that you would want us to move forward to have responsibility for this creation and to love our neighbours as you have called us to do. But God, we thank you for the world that you've created for us, for this beautiful home that it is, for the way that it sustains us and provides for us. And I just pray that we will continue to do the work here on earth, your ministry of reconciliation. And we just ask for these things in your name.